joining us now to reflect on the great career of Emmett Smith and the 20 year anniversary of him becoming the NFL's all time rushing leader. It's former Cowboys head coach Dave Campo here on 105 building. through the fan. And a good afternoon, Dave. How the heck are you? Well, I tell you what, I'm wondering where 20 years went. It went fast. <laughs> I know that's right, man. Uh, well, thanks so much for coming on. You know, obviously, we want to know your your memories of, of what which seems like yesterday for a lot of us. What sticks out most in your memory from 20 years ago? Well, first of all, you know, when you think back on history, and obviously that day was a, a great deal of history being made uh, that probably will never, no one will ever get to that point again. Uh, back at that time, I kind of knew that, and obviously, you know, the memory that I have is the fact that Emmett was excited about it. Emmett knew that, obviously, that was something that he had set a goal uh, going all the way back to when he was a rookie. Uh, even with that in mind, he actually said to me, you know, I want to break that record, but I want to win the game. And, and that's what sticks out to me. And as I look back at my career, you know, being a, 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 the uh, – the spokesman or the, the person that was at uh, Tom Landry's uh, memorial representing the Cowboys, winning the Super Bowls, that was probably one of the three that sticks out to me the most at being uh, so important to me personally. What was it like coaching Emmett Smith on, on a day-in and day-out basis? Well, first of all, you know, obviously I only had him as a head coach for a few years, but I loved him because as a defensive coach – I knew he was going to get his yards every week, and there was no question that he was going to be a catalyst to, for us to win a lot of games. You know, he won four rushing titles, I think, and then also being a, uh, you know, an MVP of the Super Bowl. I mean, the guy has, has done everything in football, and he was such a dedicated guy and a good person, not just a football player. That's what sticks out to me more than anything else. Coach Darren Woodson also broke the all-time tackles record for the Cowboys on that day. So, I mean, it was, a, it was a special day for the organization. But was that also a distraction for the team at, at the time? Was that difficult to, to remain just focused on winning in the game with, with all the excess that was going on around the record? I don't think so. I mean, the one thing about the Cowboys, you know, and you can go back to when we were there, you know, there was all kinds of uh, noise one way or another with the Cowboys every week. You know, that's just the Cowboys. Yeah. And, you know, for us, we knew that, you know, obviously that was a big deal. But like I said, you know, Emmett understood that the, the game for the team and Darren as well knew that the, the, the team was what was important to everybody else along with the individual, uh, you know, efforts of those guys. Dave, you know I have to apologize to you every time I talk to you about not getting you enough good players, man. I'm sorry about that. I let you down. Brian, please. Uh, you know, you did fine. And, and uh, you know, a lot of it is, is based on, uh, you know, when you're there, how you're involved. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased that Jerry Jones gave me the opportunity to, to do that, which, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people don't have that opportunity. And for me, I still look at it as a positive. Okay, Lynn, I'm going to ask you a question about this current team. And as you watch this team play defense, Dave, and you've been a part of some Super Bowl winning defenses, is this team have the personnel or the capability to, to carry this, uh, this franchise to a Super Bowl? I think it does. I mean, you know, when I watch it, what Dan Quinn has done there, uh, you know, and, and again, you know, after after – with him taking over and the defense struggling at that time, he's done a remarkable job with, you know, getting guys to understand the scheme and, and how to do it. And they've added players and Parsons and, and Lawrence. They've got a lot of firepower on defense. You know, they've got guys that can cover. Uh, they've got physical safeties. They've got uh, linebackers that can really run. Uh, and of course the outside linebackers give them great, great pass rush opportunities. So, uh, to me, you know, that defense is good enough, uh, you know, and again, it's not just one unit or one person that gets you there. It's an entire team. And, and you know, I don't know how people feel in Dallas about Dak Prescott, but in my opinion, from what I know about him, uh, he has what it takes to do it as well. It's just, it's mind boggling that they haven't done it in so long. 
David, I'm focusing again on the defense here, if I could. On, I, I appreciate what you say about Dak and all. I, the big questions everybody has around here is about the run defense. And, okay, as when you were a coordinator and, and all the things, how hard is it? Is it hard to scheme for run defense, or is it if you don't have the right personnel? What, what makes somebody have a really good run defense or not have a good run defense? Well, I, I, it obviously starts with, with the guys up front, you know, and, and to be honest with you, running game today is a lot different than the running game back when I was doing it. You know, and back in the day, it was a little bit more vanilla. You know, if you could uh, store it up inside, shore it up inside, and, and stop the power plays and this and that, here it's a wide open spread game, RPOs, uh, zone reads, you know, all those things put pressure on the defense. And to me, uh, the way you, you stop the run is, is you have to be able to commit more to the run game and have some guys in the secondary to be able – that can handle one-on-one -on -one play because in order to do that, you've got to put an eighth guy up there and that, you know, puts you one-on-one -on -one a lot. And to me, I think the corner position is even more important today than it was back then. Coach, I'm glad you brought up the corner position as we talk with former Cowboys head coach Dave Campo here on 105.3 The Fan. You're, you're a former DB, longtime DB's coach. What do you think of Trayvon Diggs? He's pretty polarizing. A lot, a lot, some people, when they look at the analytics, they question how good Diggs is. Personally, I love him, and I think he's just getting better and better. Well, I think one of the things that makes gives you an opportunity to win on defense as a team is, is turnovers. And you like playmakers in the secondary. You know, and uh, Diggs is one of those guys that is a little bit polarizing because at times he's a little bit of a riverboat gambler. And, you know, obviously that means that he's going to make some plays, but at the same time he's going to give some up every once in a while. You know, I haven't uh, studied, you know, being down in Florida, I'm actively involved in, in a radio stuff doing the Jaguar, uh, during the Jaguars. And so I haven't watched the Cowboys as much as I would like. But uh, from what I know of him, he's an outstanding athlete. He can, he can run. He's quick uh, and actually pretty physical, but he's a baller. You know, he can find the ball. And so, to me, it's good to have a guy like that in the secondary for sure. It's Coach Dave Campo here on The Fan. Okay, we're, we're reflecting on what happened 20 years ago. Emmett Smith, all-time rushing leader. I don't mean to put you on the spot here with one of your guys, but where do you put Emmett on the all-time running backs list? I'd love your perspective on that. Well, to me, you know, it's interesting because we used to have discussions back when he when we were there and he was playing uh, between Wanstead and Butch Davis and, and some of us defensive guys. Who was better, Emmett Smith or uh, Sanders? Yeah. And, and, you know, and... Some of them like Sanders. I liked Emmett. Yeah. And the reason that I liked Emmett was because he was one of those guys that was not going to ever lose you yardage. He was going to keep the chains moving. And my feeling as a defensive coach was that if you get a guy that can, that can go three yards, five yards, three yards, 10 yards, three yards, 20 yards, that kept that offense on the field and the more the offense was on the field the less we were on the field defensively so I put Emmett up there with as good a, a, a back as I've ever been around and obviously I, I've seen some good ones but uh, I will take Emmett Dave, come on, man! You, you, how many times you seen Barry Sanders run and you were holding your breath and you were cussing as he was running with the football? Absolutely. I mean, there's no question. I'm not. I'm not downgrading his ability. No, I'm just I'm uh, having fun with you. Believe me. Believe me <laughs> I know how you cuss on the you? sidelines because I know you're <laughs> like, oh, get that sob, get him, get him, get him, get him. <laughs> Listen, we had to take when we practiced to get ready for Barry. Uh, you know, his big thing was, you know, he was going to go minus three, minus three, there minus five, yeah. fifty. Yeah. You know exactly. And so we used to. We worked a lot on tackling that week because, uh, you know, and it was more tackling but getting a lot of people around him so that he didn't have the ability to do that. But I'm a more – I'm a conservative guy, uh, Brian. I'm one of those guys that I like the consistency sure. and, 
and you know the drives that, that keep us off the field. That's why I go with Evan. It's a smart man. That's a hell of an answer right there, Coach. Now, can you confirm, we, we've had a lot of stories coming out as they celebrate the 20th anniversary, and you, you were worried about a lot more than just what was going on with Emmett on that day, but supposedly he wore four different jerseys. Is this accurate? Was he doing a bunch of different wardrobe changes? He did, absolutely. You know, they had one for each quarter, if I can remember correctly. I'm, now, listen, you know, I'm 75 years old, so my memory slips a little bit every once in a while. But you sound sharp. I, be, I believe that he, he uh, had four different wardrobes, uh, helmets, shoes, the whole works, and they, he changed every, every quarter. And, uh, you know, I didn't worry too much about that. I was more worried about the Seattle uh, Seahawks at that time. And uh, I figured, hey, if, if, if that's what they need to do to, to create history, I'm all for it because I want him to run as much as he could that day and get as many yards as he could. Well, Dave, for some people, this day is a uh, is is the 20 year anniversary of Emmett's breaking the record, and for others, it's the 20 year anniversary of Darren Woodson absolutely KOing Daryl Jackson in that game. Do you remember that hit? I do remember the hit, but uh, believe me, Darren Woodson. You know, when you talk about guys that I coached and have been around. He's probably my favorite of all time of anybody that I ever coached. You know, he was one of those guys that, you know, was non-assuming. Uh, he was uh, all about the team. Uh, he, he, I, I actually scouted him. And, and You're the reason why uh, he's here, Dave. You're the reason why he was well, a Dallas Cowboy. Yeah, I, I, I was, and uh, it, it, that was important to me. But more than anything else, you know, the area he came out of in, in Phoenix, uh, a lot of his friends were either dead or in jail. Uh, for him to come out as great a young man as he is, he is my favorite just because of that, even even more so than his ability as a football player. So you were you were doing the draft work on him, and, and you identified that this was a guy the Cowboys needed. Can you talk about that process? Yeah, sure. It was quick. Uh, I actually uh, went out to see Philippi Sparks. Uh, Filippi was uh, at Arizona State, and, and uh, you know, we were looking for a corner. But prior to that, Jimmy had told us that w he felt we really needed, because he, uh, NFC East was a power league at that time, we needed a, a really power, strong safety. So when I got out there, I was watching film, and we had Darren on the list, but down way down because he was a weak side outside linebacker. And I'm watching film. And, and I'm seeing this guy run all over the place. He wasn't making a lot of plays because they were running away from him all the time. Sitting there with scouts watching film before the workout, they were saying, I don't know about this Woodson guy because he doesn't ever hit anybody. <laughs> well, I'm watching him. He didn't have to hit anybody because they had a good football team and a lot of other people were making plays. So we get out there for the workout. He lines up at six, whatever he was, six, two, six, one and a half, uh, 218. He lines up for the 40-yard dash. I'm standing there at the end of it, and he blows out a 4 3 five, 40. Mm. Well, when I saw that, I said, you know what? I'm working this guy out as a DB. So we worked him out, uh, and I went back to Jimmy, and I said, Jimmy, I said, I'll tell you what. If we take this guy, he's going to be a starter for us at nickel. I promise you that. And he'll be a great special teams player. Mm -hmm. The only thing I don't know about him is his ball hawking skills because he has never been back there but i said this guy might be the guy we're looking for jimmy called me in the day of the draft he said repeat it all i repeated it i didn't think he'd take him as high as he took him but he took him at the top of the second round so uh hmm. you know i just felt he was the guy and and he turned out to be the guy what is that feeling like, Dave, when you put your nuts on the line for somebody and then the coach, they go and draft him, and now you're like, okay, now we got to make dang sure this thing works out? <laughs> well, you know, that was a funny one, too, because, you know, I wasn't real big on playing young players, rookies, back in the secondary because it was such a, you know, an important uh, position to me, obviously. But uh, with – the first year, you know, that's what he did. He was a nickel, and he was a backup safety, and he was, you know, a, uh, a special teams on everything. After the season, Jimmy walked in. He said, camps. He said, we're starting Darren Woodson at safety next year. 
And I said, well, Jimmy, you know, he's a rookie. I don't know. I'm a little nervous. He looked at me and he said, Dave, we're starting Darren Woodson at safety. And I looked at him. I said, Jimmy, that's exactly what I was just going to say. We're <laughs> starting him at, at safety. And, and that's how it went from there. Dave, I, I, I know you've always been outspoken and stuff like that, and I can't let you get away with this without asking this question. Do you think that J uh, Jerry is ever going to put Jimmy in the ring of honor? I do. I really do. And, and uh, you know, I, I've been around them both when they've been together over the, the last, uh, you know, few years at the Hall of Fame, at, at a couple of reunions, uh, you know, and, and – you know, things have calmed down a little bit there. I really think it's just a matter of time. And, of course, Jimmy made the statement, are you going to put me in before I'm before I'm dead? Right. So that I'm a little concerned about. Which one's going to go first? I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, but I, I, he belongs there. And, and I really, in my heart of hearts, believe that Jerry uh, is, is man enough that he's going to do it. Well, Coach, before we let you boogie on out of here, one of our teammates, Mike Bassick of our Midday Show, has become a big Jacksonville Jags fan, and he loves him some Trevor Lawrence. We'll see Jacksonville later on down the road. I know you're doing radio there. What's your scouting report right now on the Jags and Trevor Lawrence? Well, I think the Jaguars are, are two things right now. They're close, but they're far away. And what I mean by that is the games they're playing right now were against teams that I felt that they were uh, had had closed the gap on, and they're not winning because they're making too many mistakes in critical situations. You know they they've been very close in every one of their ball games, and and you know I think they're going to get better as the season goes on once they start cleaning up some of those those little things. Uh, I think the Cowboys are a better football team. I think you know, but you know, guys in the NFL that doesn't always matter. Right. You know, and playing at home, uh, if, if they continue to improve with doing the things that, that they have to do and, and not make critical errors, they've got a chance to play with anybody, which most teams in the NFL do. So, uh, you know, I, I don't think you can look at that game as a, as a guarantee for the Cowboys. I would think that the Cowboys would be favored uh, in the ball game, and, and uh, you know, that's how I see it right now. And I think the quarterback is improving week to week so uh dave uh, 20 years ago was our guy brought us already a crusty pain in the butt or is that a more recent development no that's recent okay that's recent <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> listen he had to listen he had to go a long way he was originally a green bay packer what are yeah, you gonna say yeah. you know he had yeah, to, used to kick he my ass all the time dave here. yeah <laughs> <laughs> hey he dave. had to mature yeah I'm I'm curious, Dave, of the uh, of the teams because you coached late '80s Miami Hurricanes and then early '90s Cowboys. Like when you think of biggest personality teams, do you think of those '90s Cowboys or do you think of those '80s Hurricanes teams? You know, I, I think of the '80s Hurricane team because I think they had more characters on it. You know, uh, the, the the Miami Hurricanes back at that time. Uh, were a different breed. Now, there were a lot of guys that came from tough neighborhoods, but they loved the game of football, and you had to, you know, they were on edge all the time. So, uh, you know, from a character standpoint, the Cowboys had some of those same guys, but I look back at the Hurricanes, and, and that was a special time. It, it, uh, one of the top programs in college football history at that time. Incredible, the journey uh, through football that you have made, and we thank you so much for making some time for us, Dave, and we wish you nothing but the best for the rest of the season. I appreciate you guys, and uh, I'm a big fan of the fan. 